Welcome fellow knights, it's Apollo here and we are back on another medieval battlefield. This is Medieval Kingdoms Total War 1212 AD. It's a 2 vs 2 pitch battle or field battle and this one has really good players. So this is a great replay, it's got great tactics, great army comps and it goes on for quite some time for a field battle. So if you're looking to improve your skills or, or learn something new, this is a great replay to check out. Also the rules for this battle is that you could only pick early period units so it makes it way more balanced instead of you know seeing handgunners just mow down chainmail units so that's also pretty cool you guys should definitely try out different kinds of uh, period rules you know early period late period high period uh, to just to see if you can balance the game a little bit more uh, so yeah in today's battle we are going to see the kingdom of England more specifically the Earl of Arundel Arundel uh, he's got his bannerman, uh, you know, with the king's banner, or, well, not with the king's banner, but he's fighting for England under Arundel's ba uh, banner, and then helping them out, we have the Latin Empire, and they are taking on the French Kingdom, more specifically, uh, the Duchy of Brittany, you can see their iconic black and white uh, uniforms there, and they're also taking on the Swiss. Now, their full name is Swiss Wald State. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. If I mispronounce anything, don't be afraid to correct me so I don't continue to do it. Uh, but I looked up that word because I've never seen it before, but it basically means forested city or forested fortress. So, uh, yeah, Swiss Wald State. I'm just going to call them Swiss, though, just for convenience sake. Let's go ahead and check out these army comps before this one gets started. Uh, so, England bringing three units of yeoman archers. He's got three units of spear militia. Pretty crappy unit there, but they're just there to protect the archers. He's got a good amount of foot knightly retinue, Earl of Arundel. And then he has some uh, sergeants in the back as a secondary reserve. And here is his uh, cav force. It's the knightly retinue. Of course, the Earl of Arundel. So they're going to move to the flank here. So that's his formation. Let's go ahead and look at... Oh, by the way, he's got one unit of some uh, Bill Militia that are going to be great at holding the line. Moving on to the Latin Empire. He's got some crossbows over here, about five units of crossbows. He's got this really cool pike unit. They are called pike something. I, I, I want to say it, but I don't want to mispronounce it, so I'm just going to move on. Uh, so yeah, they look really awesome. I guess the Latin Empire uh, got a bunch of new units and whatnot, so that's that's really cool. Here's them in formation. And then for his uh, infantry, he's got some men-at-arms early period, so a good amount of swords there. And then here is his emperor, Latin Emperor Henry of Flanders. So fantastic. And then here is his Latin Knights, his uh, Chevaliers. Such an awesome looking cav unit. So fantastic. So he's got a good amount of them. So let's move on to the French army. So mostly consisting of sergeants, of course, the Duke of Brittany. So he's got a good amount of them. He's also bringing this unit that I don't know how to pronounce, uh, but they are from the Duke of Bar. And he's got more foot knightly retinue, Duke of Brittany. Uh, for his cav, he's got the knightly retinue, of course, the Duke of Brittany. And then for his general, he's he has the, uh, well, he has the Duke of Brittany. So yeah, he's leading the way. He's leading his people. I think he also has some crossbows in the back here. Uh, so just crossbow sergeants. And that's going to be it pretty much for the French. Moving on to the Swiss. Swiss. He's got his uh, Cyberg, Cyberg Knights. Uh, or yes. or Yeah, Cyberg. Sky, Skyberg. Uh, not not Sky. Kyberg. Kyberg Knights. That's it. I remember how to pronounce it by, it's kind of like Sky, but with the e, without the S, so it's like Kyber, I don't know, I could be wrong, but yeah, Kyberg Knights, uh, so one unit there, and then he's got four over here, I think there was a max limit on Knights, and then for his Archers, he's got Crossbows, cro uh, Crossbow Militia, and he has some sh Sheltron Sergeants from Zaringer, <laughs> if that's even close. So yeah, lots and lots of uh, sergeants there. He's got some spears as well, so spear militia. And for his infantry, he's got the um, Zyringer Noble Footmen, which most of them are equipped with axes. Very bright, very vibrant uh, uniforms. So sweet, those are the army comps, and we can finally get this one started. All right, welcome back, guys. So you can see that the Swiss are marching in a very tight formation Moving up forward, they're already getting peppered down by the yeoman archers. The uh, Sheltron sergeants are uh, putting down their pikes here. 
And yeah, they are taking a beating. So they need to get a little bit closer because they do not have as good as range, obviously, as the Yeoman Archers. Also, being in that tight formation, he's going to lose a lot of soldiers. Uh, so he does need to get a move on. Maybe get his crossbows in uh, loose formation. So here comes the Swiss Army. Let me go ahead and just show you a bird's eye view of the formations here. You can see that the Cav is on the flank here on this right flank if you're looking at the Swiss point of view. So I think the Cav is trying to uh, match up here and we might see an epic Cav battle uh, pretty soon. But the Swiss are getting really close. Look at this formation staying in this perfect formation. Nicely done. But is it going to be useful? I don't know. They're going to get melted by those yeoman archers. Let's see, they, you can see some of the crossbows all bloodied up here. Let's look at the point of view of these yeomans. There they go, they're letting loose some arrows. Definitely got to try to use heavy shot whenever you're using your bows. Uh, because, well, maybe not so much for an early period rule kind of battle. Because, you know, they don't have that, you know, tough steel plate armor. But finally, the crossbows are in range. And they should be able to do a lot of damage to these yeoman archers. Uh, but the good thing is that he's in loose formation, so that's really going to help him out. Um, so we got, let's see, over on this side, the, the French and the Latin Empire getting a little bit closer. Also, look at this, the Latin Empires, they've got their crossbows double teaming uh, the Swiss here. So, you know, since the French are outnumbered in, in terms of uh, crossbows, he can go ahead and sacrifice some of his own. The Swiss are not going to have any of that, and they're actually going to charge down some of their knights here, but they're going to disengage just trying to scare them off. Then we have some pikes moving forward to try to protect his, uh, his, um, his archers. Now, over on this side, we do have a bit of a cav engagement. We have uh, the Chevaliers taking on the French Knightly Retinue, and uh, it's a pretty intense battle. We also have more cav running around the flank, maybe trying to get a better position, and trying to surround all of the French cav. Is that all of his cav, though? That is. So the French are already at a huge disability, uh, dis disadvantage, not disability, uh, because of the lack of cav. So hopefully they can hold out and try to defeat this uh, Latin Empire cab, but it's not going to be likely. All right, let's head back over to this side, see what's going on. We actually have England moving forward, so we got a massive infantry charge here. England versus Swiss. He's falling back his crossbows, getting his, uh, his, his spearmen and his pikes in position. Let's see if England's actually going to charge the pikes here with his foot nightly retinue. Here we go, guys. Oh, uh, they're a little hesitant. You can see troops colliding down on the other side. So he is going to charge in. This is going to be pretty nasty. Yeah, oh god. So they are dying pretty quickly to those pikes. And we have more pikes down here. It looks like they're double teaming um, the English infantry with pikes and uh, like sworded infantry. And we have a massive cav engagement on this side as well. So let's go ahead, do slow-mo. Get a good view of what's going on because this is really important. So we got two cav units from England charging in. Also, they're supported by the spear militia. All of the swordsmen have engaged the flanks here. And look at this right here. He's disengaging his foot nightly retinue. He sees no point to try to fight these guys if he doesn't have to. That's a great idea against those pikes. We also have another cav charge. Look at that coming in. And he has more cav coming around this way. The French are taking more of a defensive position. And we have the Latin Empire charging up their men at arms to try to take on this French spear wall. Which really will not last that long against these men at arms. So uh, let's do normal speed here. So just trying to poke holes in the defenses. Here comes more English cab trying to wrap around. So what he's going to try to do here, not attack the center, but try to break through at the flanks and then maybe get behind the pikemen. You can see the pikes are moving out of the center and moving to the flanks, realizing that he needs to send more troops over here to pr try to protect this flank. But that's going to leave a big hole in the uh, the center, you know, battle lines there. And we do have some troops going towards the center. Yep, well done here. So the units that he originally charged in and then retreated, now engaging because he has an opening to the crossbows. And here comes the general seeking an opportunity, you know, that you got to be careful. You cannot leave gaps in your battle line or your troops in the, you know, the back lines are going to get trampled. And now we have more cab charging in. Uh, the Swiss are trying to recover from that uh, general charge. And they're trying to keep the men's spirits high. Oh, is he charging in the backs of his own men? I don't know. We got to do slow motion again. It's these kind of, you know, the field battles are just so fast paced. 
it's hard to uh, get every single aspect of you know the tactics and whatnot uh, but this cav engagement still going on it should go in favor of England because they are using spear militia in the mix uh, with their with their cav also it's a pretty close pretty intense battle on these wings I mean look at this formation this is amazing so many troops in one area this is going to be a tough defense to crack but the center has well the center is non-existent and England is pushing forward some troops but we do have the Swiss cav trying to contain that cav over on the other side it's pretty much the same things going on at the other flank lots and lots of infantry trying to duke it out for the for the uh, the flanks whoever wins the flanks is going to win this battle and we have here the Latin Empire moving over some pikemen uh, to support his English ally because things are a bit slower on this side so let's go ahead and do normal speed see what's going on with the French versus Latin Empire battle really close lots of infantry engaging here in the center uh, the cab battle is still going on and the flank over there so let's actually uh, get rid of the HUD do some nice cinematic shots here see some troops they're still waiting so I think he's he's going into this defensive position because he realizes that the cav battle is not going in his favor but they are still fighting they do have the support of his uh, polearm type unit but the Latin Empire sent over some pikemen to try to even the odds and they are attacking them at the side there doing a little stabby stabby pokey pokey So pretty intense cab engagement. Let's head back over to uh, the English side where they're taking on the Swiss. So we can see here that we've got a lot, a lot of cab breaking through. And actually the general is uh, in the fight taking out some spearmen. He's got to be careful. He doesn't want to lose his general. But also he's got to seek opportunities to try to get behind the Swiss army because of their uh, very awesome uh, spearmen, the Sheltron formation. So it's a very intense battle on this flank. Uh, the battle's still going on on this side as well. These pikes are doing everything they can to hold the line. But th with the English cab being at their backs, this is not a good sign. This is actually really good for England. The balance of power is still really close, and there's still eight minutes in this battle. So it, this is anyone's game. And we do have some wavering from England on this side, the uh, Swiss general. Oh, is that him? Look! Oh, look at that feather. Look at that feather. Look, he's like, you peasant, you dare duel me in a, a match of glory? Come on, take him out, take him out. You can do it. Oh, you're going. There we go. Very intense. I'm pretty sure that's the general because I saw him, like, giving out commands. He's, he, man, this guy is a nuisance. Oh, good swing of that battle axe there. Come on, take him out already. All right, well, that's taken way too long, so... I don't want to miss other parts of the battle, like over here, where there's a massive chain route from the uh, Swedish cab. So now they, or not Swedish, the Swiss cab. I'm probably going to say that a couple times. But yeah, the Swiss cab has been defeated, and they can now flank around with the Spear Militia. And here comes a nice charge from the back here at the general. Going to try to take out that general who's stuck in melee. And uh, let's, let's go back to slow-mo, see other parts of the battle. Yeah, so if I say Swedish... Uh, I do apologize. I might have said that a couple times, but I, I mean Swiss. So, yeah, forgive me about that one. All right, and uh, the fight here is still awfully close. This is anyone's game. It's Like I said earlier, it's really all about who's going to win this cab engagement right here. And it I, amazingly enough, I mean, unless, unless the French had some uh, cab that I was not aware of, their cab is still hanging on even though they were outnumbered. Uh, they well here's the Duke of Brittany he's he's gonna join the fight because he realizes that he is needed in this uh, you know this situation he cannot lose this flank he cannot lose the cav engagement or it will be certain doom for his army all right so let's head back over here I can't believe this battle still going on over here amazingly enough even with England at the flank the Swiss continue to hold on so England trying to take out what's left what's left of these uh, Swiss Knights here and if they can kill them which it looks like they do have the advantage in numbers I think so uh, but if yeah if they can take them out then they could easily just hammer and anvil these pikemen over here who are still who are still stuck in melee oh wait 
is that the general? Okay, I thought that was the English for a second, but no, that was the Swiss general trying to reinforce his battle lines. A little risky there, not really needed. You know, you got to be careful not to charge the back of your own men. And the uh, the English general still just still taking care of some troops, some spearmen moving on the flank. And oh, yep, England is starting to make some progress over here in this cav engagement. This right here, this battle will decide the entire battle. This cav engagement. Oh, here comes a hammer and anvil. Coming to the backs. Oh, yes. Really good charge there. Taking out a ton. A ton of those noble footmen. And that is going to most certainly shatter this flank. And all these troops are going to be free to roam around. And, uh, you know, close the jaws. And surround the Swiss infantry. But it's still going on. Great cav management by both armies. I mean, there's still a ton of Swiss troops over here. So again, the balance of power is still dead even. So again, this is this is anyone's game. It's it's not over yet, even though it's looking like England might take this one. Uh, let's see what's going on over on this side though, because this is still a really important battle here. Here's uh, the Duchy of Brittany moving in more of their reserves to the front line. They have a ton of troops here, but they got to take on some you know Latin pikes. But again, it's all about this cav engagement. And well, yep, the uh, the Latin Empire seems to be uh, finally finally winning the cav engagement. About time. But uh, the French, you know, they did a good job of trying to hold them back, even though they were outnumbered. Uh, the general, though, is in danger. The Duke of Brittany is in danger. So they're a little bit surrounded. Here comes some pikemen to try to finish the job and take out their leader. If the Duke of Brittany dies here, this could be uh, very bad for the rest of the French army. There they go, marching into position. That is awesome. So more and more troops. Uh, this is actually some Latin uh, men-at-arms surrounding the uh, the sergeants of uh, of the French. So that's going to cause some uh, damage to their morale. And yep, the Swiss army is breaking because they realize their other flank has shattered. So really, they have no hope in this battle. And we even have some archers nearby just shooting down the troops who are retreating. No mercy, none so ever. So we got these last noble footmen putting up their final stand, even though they are surrounded. They continue to fight on, even though their general has broken. And now, oh, actually, you know what? Look at this. The Latin Empire breaking to the sight of, you know, the amount of uh, French troops are in their face. But here comes a hammer and anvil. Oh, oh my God, that was devastating. And that, my, my friends, that is why Cav is king. Always, always put a lot of money into your Cav and it will do some great things for you. So even though the Latin Empire is losing this main infantry fight, the Cav is going to help turn the tables get some hammer and anvil and of course we have the English cab now moving over to support their ally so fantastic fantastic use of cab and uh, they were able to defeat this this unit here but the balance of power is now in favor of the English Latin Empire Alliance uh, but the French you know they still got a fight in them uh, the crossbows are now in, in melee got more oh oh geez the general charging into some uh, some uh, pole arms there. I think that was his own ally, though. Can you actually do friendly fire charging into allied pikes? I'm not really sure, uh, but I don't I don't think so. Here's what's left of the Latin uh, the Latin infantry pushing on the French flank. More and more cav coming in. Oh, this is going to be brutal. Oh, yes. God, that would suck. That's like instant death right there. Not a good sight if you're rooting for the French uh, kingdom. And uh, yep, yep, they're they're getting surrounded here. You can see the formation. Actually, let's go ahead and do tactical view. You can see they are surrounded by blue blocks and yellow blocks, and it's down to this red center. Can they hold on? Can the crossbows kill enough people in time? Doesn't seem like it. Now the English knights moving out of position looking for more places to uh, charge oh guy just smacked him with his shield
Oh, here comes another. Oh no, the crossbows. About to be trampled by the English Cav. Oh, yeah. There's nothing he can do about that. He doesn't have any reserves. His crossbows are out there fighting their own fight. It's up to these, uh, these sergeants here. Here comes more Cav coming in. So what do we got over here? We got a pretty healthy unit of Foot Knightly Retinue putting up a good fight, but it's only a matter of time because they are getting attacked from the rear from Cav and they are surrounded. And they're taking on, oh, they're taking on some pikes here, but they're looking the wrong way. Uh, but we're down to the last 30 seconds of this battle. And over on this flank, everything has been wiped out. The Latin Empire now marching to uh, finally seize victory here. And here comes the final charge right in the rear of these French troops. That was beautiful. So great charge there. And that is going to wrap up today's battle. So I hope this one was full of tactics. I did the best I could to try to commentate and, and explain everything. Uh, I know some of you guys don't like it when I talk too much. Uh, but uh, yeah, really what it came down to is that the fact that England was able to win their cav engagement and they were taking on some pretty deadly knights So it was no easy task But I think what they did really wise was um, Retreating their their infantry when they were engaging those pikes because there's really no need to fight them when they're just standing there You're faster units. You can maneuver around them. So they opened up the center He charged in a lot of cav wiping out, you know cr crossbows and whatnot skirmishers and vulnerable units and he one on this flank with the help of those pike militia so really really great battle there from england and it was actually you know if england didn't win in this fight over here between Brittany and uh, or the french and the latin empire that one was going to be really close because the Brittany or the french whatever you know what i mean the french empire the french infantry was winning their fight but they did lose the cav engagement so it would have been really close but uh yeah let's go ahead and end the replay and look at the results here so, uh, the kills with the Yeoman Archers, excellent, excellent. They did a great job. Uh, I think he also used them in melee. Also, over in the back here, we have some Cav getting tons of kills. Remember, remember guys, Cav is king. And uh, the infantry doing all right. Good number spread here. Some of them getting over 100. Some just short of 100. His Bill Militia did okay. His, his pikemen didn't do great. But remember, they were mostly fighting Cav. So these were some pretty quality kills. And the general getting 321 kills. What a monster. Uh, now looking at the Latin Empire. Uh, let's see. Yeah, pretty much the same with the Cav. Crossbow's doing a pretty good job. His infantry doing okay. His, uh, his pike here... Uh, the pike troops, not necessarily great, uh, but they weren't terrible. He was using them in, in critical moments. And then here's the Latin Emperor. And for the Swiss, yeah, he really suffered there with the, the Cav, not getting a ton of kills. His infantry did alright. His pike, some of it, well, nothing super impressive, but he did put up a good fight. It was a really close battle. And then here's the French uh, forces here. So pretty fantastic, really long battle for a pitch battle. By the way, this was sent in by Telemar. Tel, tel, I, I never, you know, dude, uh, I've actually uploaded a lot of uh, videos from him, and I never get his name right. So I'm gonna go with Telemnar. Telem, yeah, I think that's Telemnar. Telemnar. How about that? That's pretty good. So uh, yeah, if I'm saying it wrong, just correct me. Thank you guys so much for watching. This was a great battle. Hopefully, hopefully you guys learned something from this one, and I will see you in the next one.